I'm Jeb Butler, and this is Tom Giannotti of the Butler Kind Law Firm. We'll talk today about a $2 million wrongful death settlement that uh, we recently obtained for some clients, and the case arose, came to us from southeast Georgia. Mr. Giannotti can tell us a little bit about the facts. Yeah, so our firm had the privilege of representing two young men who uh, fortunately lost their father in this farming accident uh, in Fitzgerald, Georgia. Their father was work, was an employee on a farm. Uh, he was helping his boss hitch a peanut trailer to his boss's pickup truck. His boss was backing up, and he's helping guide him so that the uh, truck trailer hitch aligned with this uh, loaded trailer full of peanuts. And he was then going to hitch the two together. Uh, unfortunately, he was um, pinned between the two because his employer, his boss, accidentally hit the uh, gas pedal. He said that his foot slipped off of the brake and he accelerated backwards and, and pinned uh, our client's father. And unfortunately, or he passed away. Yeah. So our client's father's back there, as Tom said, just kind of come on back doing that thing. Um, and it, Tom talked a little bit about um, what we thought happened in the case, at least initially. Uh, and that came, I think, from the police force. So the, the sheriff's deputies show up out there, and they start interviewing the at-fault driver, the boss, and he tells them, according to the police report at least, I guess we'll return to this later, that his foot slipped off the brake, we guess, and hit the gas pedal. So we start looking into the case, and in any uh, personal injury case, one of the first things you need to do, personal injury wrongful death case, is find out about what insurance applies. Because often, no matter how tragic the collision was, whether it's a death or a lifelong injury or whatever, you usually are unable to collect beyond the insurance limits unless you happen to have some really wealthy defendant, which is you know, not what we had here. So we start looking at insurance limits. Typically, that doesn't take very long because they're usually on the police report, but not this time. Um, for whatever reason, the, the investigating deputies didn't write that down. So we sent a letter to the defendant saying, hey, tell us who your insurance company is. You're required by law to do this. We didn't get a reply. Um, and eventually, Tom called them up, which you normally don't call up the people who um, are adverse to you. But in certain limited circumstances, like here, it can be fine. So Tom did and asked for his insurance company, but didn't get really the name of the insurance company. Because the peanut farmer... Um, like a lot of people, I think didn't really understand the difference between an insurance company and an insurance broker. So he gave us the name of like uh, of the broker, the small shop at, in like a strip mall probably somewhere where he went to get his insurance. Um, but that's not actually the insurance company. That's just the person who sells the insurance company's products. But anyway, once we had that name, we sent a letter pursuant to the official code of Georgia, annotated at 33-3-28 to them and got back some information about insurance limits. Um, and at first they told us, um, what they tell $1 us? A million dollars? Yeah, at first they told us the insurance limits were $1 million, which is, you know, pretty good. Normally you don't see them that high. Um, but we pressed a little, a little farther and went ahead and filed the lawsuit. And lo and behold, after we did that, Coming to find out, there's an additional million dollars. There was $2 million of insurance, which goes to show that sometimes if you press a little bit, you learn a little bit more. And all that's well and good. Um, it's nice to know that your defendant's well insured, but before we could collect anything, we had to get past the workers' compensation bar, which is the law in Georgia that means generally, if you're hurt on the job, you cannot sue your, your um, employer or your boss in normal court. Uh, you got to go through the workers' compensation system. But how do we get around that, Tom? Yeah, so we actually um, were able to, like Jeb said, get around the workers' compensation bar because the uh, Workers' Compensation Act, the statute in Georgia that, that provides for uh, what Jeb explained, has an exception. And it, it, it it's kind of hard to, you, it's, it's not exactly clear uh, in the statute, but it, says that farm laborers, uh, I believe is the uh, phrasing, are exempt from that. Uh, the Georgia legislature 
when they passed the Workers' Compensation Act, decided that farmers, essentially, or farm laborers, were um, exempt. So you know, that meant that people like uh, our client's employer, as a kind of mom-and-pop type operation, uh, don't have to purchase workers' compensation insurance for their uh, employees. Normally, even if your employer is negligent, you can't sue your employer directly. Uh, we, we got around that here because of that exception. Um, it was also a very small operation. I think there were probably fewer than three employees, or maybe three employees exactly, and that's yeah. um, another possible exception. And that wasn't necessary, really, because of the farm labor part, but either one of those two really would have, uh, I think, applied here. So we were able to uh, sue his boss directly, and, and that's um, <clears throat> how we were able to pursue this wrongful death case. Yeah. We ended up with a little bit of a um, factual dispute, though, because occasionally it happens that once a lawsuit is filed, you might find out about more insurance, but sometimes people's stories start to change. And I, I don't know if he would have said this the whole time, but uh, we filed the case and got back what we call the answer and responses to our written um, discovery requests. And the defendant had changed the story. Uh, Tom, I think I'm getting ahead of myself. You were supposed to tell us about this. Sorry, tell us about the factual dispute. Well, Jeb's the one that went down and, and actually <laughs> inspected the farm. He, he went and knocked on the uh, gentleman's door who, who owned this peanut field where the employer was farming peanuts on the on this date in question and asked, may I please, you know, uh, take some pictures of your field or yeah, something like that. Can I wander around here? And he's like, yeah, dude, have a great time. You know? So... Yeah, and Jeb, you know, we, we took uh, the defendant driver's deposition. And, uh, but, but basically what the story that he told, uh, which is different from what was in the police report, was that the uh, trailer must have rolled forward. He wasn't really able to say exactly how it happened. He says, I definitely did not say to the uh, investigating law enforcement officer that my foot slipped off the brake and I hit the gas. That's not what happened. So um, he's saying the police report's wrong. Right. I mean, and Jeb, we talked to the... We talked to the officer. He said, yeah, why would I have written something like that down if I, you know. Uh, so, but, you know, but that's not, uh, he was staunchly denied that. But um, only, again, um, after the case was, was litigated. But he, um, he said that, you know, I don't know what happened. I didn't say that, but it must have rolled forward because there's a little bit of a hill. You can't see it in this photo. But, uh, but as you mentioned, Jeb went and, looked at the field, and I think there was a slight incline, right? Yeah, that's right. That's right. The field slopes a little bit in this area. Um, so the um, at-fault driver, the boss, is telling us about how, you know, he was just sitting in his truck waiting, and, and he felt this bump. We didn't really believe him. Um, I think he was making that up uh, for a few reasons. One, this is full. And that's a lot of peanuts. Um, we figured out, we talked to some farmers that we knew that um, – a peanut wagon that's loaded like this going to weigh 14,000 pounds. It is in relatively soft dirt. You can see this furrow or track here. Um, and what that tells us is that it's unlikely this wagon is going to roll on such a slight hill. Oh, excuse me. Um, even though it was on a hill, it was a slight hill. And we did not think that the wagon uh, was going to roll in a situation like that. So we got ready. Um, to look at some things, and what we had planned to do was have an um, an EDR download done, an electronic recorder download done from the pickup truck, which, um, let's see, they, they don't always work. A, there has to be a significant collision to make that EDR recorder record data. But if it does record data, then it will show whether, usually it will show whether someone was pressing the gas pedal or they weren't. So here, we were about 50-50, according to our expert, on whether the um, impact was going to be sufficient to trigger that recording. But if it did, we would know what happened. We would know whether his foot was on the pedal or it wasn't. And we thought we were going to find that his foot was on the pedal. Because I, I didn't believe him. I took his deposition. I thought he made that up. Um, but, you know, we talked with our clients. And... Um, you know, they, and, and we had to level with them and say, look, you know, we think this is going to go great, but there's some risk here too, because it might show the opposite. It might show that the other guy's telling the truth. 
And if that happens, we could we could lose the whole case. Um, about this time, too, the insurance company had decided that they were, really wanted us to take the $2 million they were offering it. So uh, we had a tough decision to make. Um, you know, we were, uh, Tom and I were, we were, saying we were willing to go forward. We thought the insurance company had, had made, done something unusual. They made some errors early in the case that we thought could enable us to collect above the policy limit. So Tom and I were willing to go forward, ready to go, download was scheduled, talk with our clients, and they saw it a little differently. Yeah, you know, and it's hard, you know, it's a significant amount of money. Um, and, you know, these are hardworking young men and um, could really use the money. So I think they decided in the end that it, they'd rather, you know, a burden hand was better. Um, but, you know, who are we to really, you know, it's their case. You know, it's not our case. It's, right. it's our client's case. So, um we abided by their wishes and we resolve a case for $2 million for uh, some deserving folks. And, you know, who knows what really would have happened. I guess we were, you know, our clients had moved away from, from Ben Hill County. Um, right. There were, uh, uh, the defendant farmer was uh, by a, a well-liked person in that community. So um, we don't know what a, what a jury would have done in the end. And we think they would have found our, our version of events credible and the others not. Um, with or without the uh, EDR data, but, you know, a good result in the end. Yeah, I mean, that's right. You, um, it's their case. That's right. And it's a good result, and we end up with two happy clients, so we call that a win. That's right. Thanks. <laughs>